is there going to be a time when all cutters are open to all uh, to all women? I don't I don't know. I don't think so. As you know, some of that it has to do with um, uh, with the birthing uh, arrangements. Now, what I will say is, as we start talking about other issues um, and we build new cutters, the birthing spaces are getting smaller, and so therefore the opportunities for women are getting greater because now you don't have to find 20 women to go aboard a cutter or 15 women to go aboard a cutter. All you need is two that share a head. And so that becomes a much easier uh, problem set. So I had the Kate Morgan out of Portland, Maine. I had four women uh, in forward birthing. And the, the way that we had it was, okay, the FS2 is leaving. And I would call the detailer and they said, we don't have an FS2. I'm like, okay, well, my quartermaster's also leaving. How about you? Find me a female quartermaster. Quartermaster now looks to me, right? Um, find me a female quartermaster and a male cook, and we'll figure it out that way. It takes a little bit of uh, back and forth to do that. Um, I'm still a little frustrated that we're still in that same dialogue. And senior chief is the women to flow coordinate. I'm sorry. <laughs> was was and she's, uh, she's agreeable to keep taking over. I'll be taking over. We're, we're, I feel like I'm bouncing the ball. What's in charge here? Okay. <laughs> and you are? Uh, I'm Chief Maria. I just reported to BSC this Monday, uh, and I'll be taking over as the woman. All right. So give all the hard questions in. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so, so he's re now. There's a couple things that make me sad. Two things that make me sad. One that we still need a gender policy advisor, and two that we still need a female a float coordinator. Because in a perfect world, we wouldn't need that. You know, when MK goes to ship, it doesn't matter what their gender is. Um, but the reality is, there's still racks are there's still limited racks available. What I will say, the Coast Guard is trying to be as innovative as they can, and under Senior Chief's watch, um, they converted, I guess for lack of a better term, to two two tens, two two tens. Now, the birthing area, who's on a two ten, anybody? Okay, you wanna explain? Uh, I was on Dauntless when that happened, Admiral. Stand up. Uh, and Valiant and the Coast Guard cutter decisive. Um, I was on Dauntless when that happened, while they made the transition, so I was actually in female birthing with um, the enlisted members, and there's uh, four, there's three different areas on a 210 that enlisted can sleep in, and two of them share one head. So those became the male areas, and then the lower uh, birthing area was female because it had its own um, head, and then they put curtains around. So all the lounge areas, men and women could be in, and then there was a curtain area to make sure that birthing area was separate. And it worked really well. Um, it was a little different because uh, the Nodders showed up first and then the first class showed up. So I learned a lot about birthing in But I definitely, I would love to see it happen on Decisive. We're still all male and it's only females uh, are officers and we have three right now. And we're and I do know also that when the FRCs first came out, maybe I'll ask Master Chief Cal Jones to speak to her, Master Chief Kendra, when the FRCs came out, the Commandant committed that it would be able to accommodate women, and that we do have women aboard the FRCs. And so when they were in, under construction, they said, we will ensure that that, um, that, that moves forward. So um, are we where we need to be? No. Are we better than where we were? Yes. 